Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So I'm sorry I left you a little high and dry in the last video about what is going into the coffee table enclosure, but that will be revealed today. Now I know a few of you like to guess on what goes on within the realm, so I'm going to give you a moment to guess what may be in this coffee table enclosure. So first of all, let's give you some clues. They can live communally, they can live fine on a desert setter, and it's something I have kept before. Now while you get your tickers thinking, I wanna let you know it's the last week now for the availability of the Guild of Assassins t-shirt. This is a limited edition Bugrams t-shirt available on my merchandise site. A link to that site will be in my description below. So be goodbye from this t-shirt. Why? Well, we've got a new one. We have got a brand new limited edition t-shirt and that will give you another clue to what dwells within this coffee table enclosure. Ta-da! Here it is guys, the new limited edition t-shirt available only for a few months in the Bug Realms merch store. And if you can't see it, it says the Sons of Ra. Now Ra was an Egyptian god, so perhaps you've come up with what's going to be in here now? Let's take a look and see if you were right. So off comes the table protector. Can anyone see from here what's inside? Let's take a closer look. Well, if you said Egyptian predatory beetles, you were correct. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So most of them are actually scarpered now that I've opened the curtains to get a better view but one of them, number five, is still out in the open down here. So these five do make up our Sons of Ra. Give me a like if you do like the name and the crest that I have given these Egyptian predatory beetles. Now for anyone that has never owned Egyptian predatory beetles, they are fairly simple, but they are full of character. Always running around, always climbing, and they make all these fascinating little things in the sand. Can you see all the little swirly whirly bits? Oh, it's incredible. Where did he just go? Oh, he's gone behind the barrier, I think. Typical. There we go, that's where they sit on the barrier there. They actually can fall behind them, but they have two entrances back out from that barrier. That's just used to keep the substrate in place. Oh, I absolutely love, love, love these guys. Now the only issue with owning Egyptian predatory beetles is the fact that we cannot actually get them to breed successfully or raise their young in captivity, meaning these will be wild caught specimens. And because of that, we don't know how old they are. I don't know if you can hear that scuttling there. He's gone behind a barrier again. But there you can see there's a way up. Anyway, as I was saying, we don't know how old they are, so you could be buying them with weeks left of their life, months left of their life, or you could still have them for over a year like I did my previous Egyptian predatory beetles. I could literally watch these guys for hours. Now they will hunt and chase prey as well, but I tend to find them to be a bit lazy. They kind of wait for the prey to run by them. And if they can snatch it, they will. And if they fail, they'll just stand there like idiots and wait for it to pass them again. Now you can't class these as true communals. Although they can live together quite happily, it's more that they tolerate each other. They will fight and they can kill one another. It has happened before, but most of the time, they'll be absolutely fine. Mine lived together for a year before there was any form of fatality and I didn't witness what actually happened. It could have been the beetle was trying to claim dominance. It could have been that the other one was sickly so the bigger one finished it off. We don't really fully know their behaviours in that way so it's something that having more of these beetles like I have here will help me understand. Now I do intend on growing the amount of beetles I have in here too. I want to double this amount over time and get at least 10 in here because the enclosure is absolutely massive. So that will be really, really interesting. 
Now, the Sons of Ra are not going to be the only things living within Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0. Now, these are not the types of things you really kind of want to add other inverts to normally, but I did do an experiment with my last beetles, and it was successful for four solid months before my beetles did end up passing away. And that, in my belief, was due to old age. Well, actually, one killed the other in the end, as I did state before, but we don't know the reasons behind that, and the other one did carry on going for quite a long time after. The animals that I kept inside with them, I'm going to keep secret for now, because I'm going to introduce them to the coffee table enclosure when I'm able to get hold of some more. Now I'm hoping that this experiment does carry on to be successful with more beetles because obviously before there was only two beetles and neither animal actually attacked each other. Neither species, I mean, attacked each other. The predatory beetles had one nip that I noticed and never again. And the other animal didn't even bother the beetles in the slightest. Look at this dippy donut. This is what I was talking about earlier, about coming behind the sand barrier. Now he's not stuck, he does look stuck, he does look troubled, he's not. He's just got to walk around here and walk in there. Or he can do the same the other direction. <laughs> what an idiot. Let's see if he's hungry. Yes! Let the battle begin. Sons of Ra, Sons of Ra. Now you can see as he'll grip the mealworm with those mandibles, trying to make a piercing point, where he'll then start sucking out the innards and chewing around the outer edge. The worm didn't stand a chance against these beetles. Now they can eat other things such as roaches too. That's a bit more of a chase and a bit more of a hunt. But we'll show that in a future video. <laughs> We're gonna go fight, fight, fight! Run, dude! Now I do often find that normally these guys do actually run off and they hide in a corner if there are other beetles living with them. And I think this is to kind of say, hey, that's my meal, everyone else get lost because they do sometimes share meals or snatch meals from one another. Let's see if another one's hungry. Come on, dude. You're showing me up here. Here's your chance to shine. Get that worm. Thinking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Battle. Look at him. How can you not want these beetles? That is so entertaining. So he was actually chewing on a bit while leaving the worm to just wriggle there on its own. He still hasn't taken another bite, look. He's standing over it to show dominance over the worm, so this is his meal. But he's happily just chewing away on the bit that he already had in his mandibles. As you can see, the other one has actually taken a full chunk off of that worm. The worm is still wriggling. They're just so chilled. They know they're the predator. They know a worm can't get away. Some more flip action going on here. Come on, dude, secure your worm. <laughs> awesome, right? And in the corner we have number three munching away as well. One, two, and three. But it seems number four and five have actually hidden away somewhere, so I'll be giving them their worms when they come back out from hiding. They can hide for quite a long time, guys. Sometimes they'll hide under the sand for weeks at a time. I'm not sure why they have this behavior. I'm not sure if that would be a gravid female to lay lava, or if they're just trying to cool down away from the heat. Wait a minute, I found number four. He was hiding under the rock. Well, where has number five gone? I have no idea where number five is. Where is the fifth son of Ra? Oh, hang on. Is he gonna try and snatch the feed? Oh, look, he's noticed, he's gonna pull it away. Go, 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 go! Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I make music noises when things are chasing things. It's just what I do, okay? A 
I've dropped you your own worm. Take it. Good man. <laughs> well, now we've had the amusement of at least four of them eating away. I think it's time to wrap up this video, don't you? So there we have it, my Egyptian poetry beetles, or as I like to call them, normally off the camera, bee calls. So we have our Sons of Ra, our awesome bee calls in Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0, and we do have the new limited edition t-shirt available only for a few months. I like it, give me that thumbs up if you like it too and you like the name, and give me a comment below to let me know, did you guess right as what was gonna be in here? Or did you think it might have been something else? Feel free to also guess at what the other co-inhabitants are going to be within this enclosure. So if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. There's going to be some cool, cool stuff coming up, maybe in a week, maybe two, maybe three. I'm not sure yet, but within the next month or so, we are going to be doing another awesome little enclosure design. Um, anyway, I'm going to give too much away if I keep yabbering, so that's going to be it from me. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, bye bye.